It's more fun to love it. It's more fun to learn. Aside from singing, I also love dancing and one of my favorite genres is of course ballet and that will be our lesson for today. What is your favorite opera or ballet? For me, my favorite Philippine ballet is Rabahari. Actually, I am so lucky that I had the chance to witness the live performance of Rabahari at the Cultural Center of the Philippines last December 2012. Welcome to the first episode of Music Grade 10, Fourth Quarter. I am your teacher, Mr. Sherwin Press Cabrales, at your service. Before we will dig into our new lesson, let's have a recap about our whole lesson for music grade 10. During our first quarter, we discuss about the music of the 20th century, which includes Impressionism, Expressionism, Chance Music, Electronic Music, and of course, Minimalism. And for the second quarter, we discuss all about the Afro, Latin, American, and popular music, including our own Philippine popular music. So we started from the music, vocal, and instrument of Africa, and then we moved to Latin American countries. And of course, our popular music, including the different genres and notable singers in popular music. And not to forget our very own OPM or Philippine Popular Music. And for the third quarter, we discussed all about Philippine Contemporary Music. And it was divided into three different types. We have traditional composers followed by new music and of course song composers. And for the fourth quarter, we will talk about the 20th and 21st century opera, ballet, musical play, and other multimedia forms. This grading period will be divided into three sections. First, we have Philippine opera, followed by ballet. And of course, for the finale, we have musical play. So for this episode, we will talk about Philippine Opera and Ballet. Are you ready? Let's go! In this lesson, you will learn about the historical background of Philippine Opera. Opera is part of the Western classical music form and tradition. It started in Italy at the end of the 16th century and soon spread through the rest of Europe, while English, French, and Italian operas were being presented, it was the Italian opera that captured the creative imagination of composers, librettists, and singers alike. The opera is an art and music form in which singers and musicians perform a dramatic work combining texts called a libretto, and a musical score, usually in an elaborate theatrical setting. It incorporates many of the elements of spoken theater, such as acting, scenery, costumes, and sometimes includes dance. The performance is typically given in an opera house, cultural center, theater, or auditorium. It is accompanied by an orchestra or a smaller musical and sound. The dialogue is entirely sung and not spoken. Opera in the Philippines The emerge of the Filipino opera started to take shape during the middle part of the 19th century. 
foreign performers including instrumental virtuoso as well as opera singers and a Spanish zarzuela which is also known as the drama Simbolico that dominated the Philippine theater scene. Performers came to the country to perform for enthusiastic audiences. Now, we have the different theaters in the Philippines. These are the first theaters in the Philippines. First, we have Surilia Theater, followed by Metropolitan Theater. And of course, not to forget our cultural center of the Philippines. It is a project by the former First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos. Local theaters including the Zorilla, Principe Alfonso, Variedades, Chiapo, and Tonto theaters were the choice venues for the mainly Italian operas that came to the country, such as Lucia de la Mermor, La Bujime, La Traviata, and Aida. Later, the opera venues were established led by the Manila Grand Opera House and the Metropolitan Theater, also known as Met. The first Filipino opera is said to be the Sandugong Panaginip by Pedro Paterno, a poet, novelist, musician, and government official. This was first presented at the Zorilla Theater on August 2, 1902. It was later translated by the Englishman M.W. Loving with the title The Dream Alliance. Following this historic development, other prominent figures and ensembles contributed significantly to the promotion of opera. They were composer Bonifacio Abdon as the first Filipino opera conductor. Dr. Ramon Javier as the first Filipino opera impresario who promoted local talents to participate in foreign productions. The Orchestra Molina was known for their interpretation of operatic works as well as other classical compositions. Subsequent Filipino operas followed sporadically, such as La Cambini, by Patricio Mariano that was staged at the Metropolitan Theater on December 19, 1933. Operatic divas included Nelia Manalo, who portrayed the leading role of Violeta in Giuseppe Verdi, La Traviata. Mercedes Matias Santiago portrayed the role of Lucia in Gaetano. Donizetti, Lucia di Lamermor. National artist Jovita Fuentes portrayed the role as Mimi in Giacomo Pocini's La Bohim. The establishment of the Cultural Center of the Philippines by then, First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos in 1969 paved the way for other Filipino operas to be staged at the legitimate venue of international standards. This time, we will talk about the different operas in the Philippines. We have La Loba Negra, No Limitangere, the opera, and of course, El Tinibusterismo, the opera. We will start with La Loba Negra. La Loba Negra, or The Black She-Wolf, is a three-act Filipino opera. Acts 1 and 2 are based on history while Act 3 is based on a legend attributed to Father Jose Burgos, one of the three martyred priests Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora, who were executed in Bagumbayan, now Luneta, in 1872. The music was composed by national artist Francisco Feliciano with libretto by soprano Fides Cuyugan Asensio. The premiere was held in 1984 with national artists for theater and film Lamberto Abeliana as director.
Noli Metanghere, the opera. The three-act opera Noli Metanghere was composed by national artist Felipe Padilla de Leon with a libretto by national artist Guillermo Tolentino. It premiered in 1957 at the Far Eastern University Auditorium. The cast included Juanita Javier Torres as Maria Clara, Don David as Ibarra, Fides Cuyugan Asensio as Sisa, Milo Cristobal as Padre Damaso, and Morley Daram as the director. There were several other productions that followed the premiere production. El Filibusterismo, the opera. El Filibusterismo is a novel by Dr. Jose Rizal, a sequel to the earlier No Limitangere. It was written four years later. It tells of the continuing struggle of the Filipinos to achieve freedom and emancipation from Spanish colonial rule. The opera El Filibusterismo was composed by national artist Felipe Padilla de Leon in 1970 with libretto by Anthony Morley. It was in the three acts and written in Tagalog. And that is all about Philippine Opera. This time we will move on to Philippine Ballet. The dance form known as ballet has been used to interpret a story of all kinds. It is a performance in which a story is told without words by using body movements and facial expressions. The lack of spoken words or sung lyrics is more than made up by the creative steps and arm gestures of the dancers. Their facial expressions and body movements add more meaning to the story behind Reveal. The performance is further enhanced by colorful costumes, elaborate sets, visually suggestive music, and synchronized choreography. Original Filipino ballet vividly presents folk tales and local fables. Tatlong Kwento ni Lola Basyang Lola Basyang is a ballet adaptation of Severino Reyes' folk tales, Mga Kwento ni Lola Basyang. It was meant to instill and rekindle the interest of the Filipino youth in the beauty, richness, and heritage of Philippine literature. The typical story scene shows the grandmother, or Lola Basyang, the pen name of the author, on a rocking chair with her grandchildren listening to her fascinating tales. Two episodes of such stories were presented by Ballet Manila with Lisa Makuha Elizalde as the company's executive director and prima ballerina. Entitled Tatlong Kwento ni Lula Basyang in 2009 and Tatlupang Kwento ni Lula Basyang in 2013, the stories were taken from the dozens of stories in the collection of Seferino Reyes. Rama Hari. It is translated as King Rama. It's a Philippine adaptation of the Indian epic Ramayana set to music, dance, and drama. Originally presented on February 8 to February 17, 1980, the creative team considered of Ryan Kayabiab in music, who is a national artist, we have also national artist Alice Reyes, the choreographer, and national artist Bienvenido Lumbera, the literature, and national artist Salvador Bernal in the theater design with the Cultural Center of the Philippines Philharmonic Orchestra conducted by Ryan Cayabiao. The major rules were performed by Basil Valdez as Rama, Kule Desma as Sita, and Leo Valdez as Rayana. The dancers were Nonoy Froilan as the counterpart of Rama, who have also Epi Nanas or Esther Rimpos as Sita, and Robert Medina as Ravana. 
The production had the dancers moving alongside the characters to provide the choreographic interpretation of their singing and acting. It is also featured the song Magbalik ka na lang, sung by Kule Desma, which was set to be instrumental in launching her music career. The race staging had Christian Bautista or Oje Mariano as Rama, we have Caril as Atlong Hari or Kalila Aguilius as Sita, and Robert Senya as Ravana. The counterpart dancers were Jean Mark Cordero or Richard Sonyada for Rama and Carissa Adea or Catherine Trofeo for Sita. opera or Philippine ballet. For me, I love them both. That concludes our first episode for Music Grade 10. Watch out for our next and final episode for Music Grade 10 and that will be all about musical play. Thank you so much for listening my dear students. See you again next time. I am your teacher, Teacher Sherwin. Have a musical day. Bye-bye.